Attention, you are now listening to a Final Level Podcast with Ice-T and Mick Benzo. If you are offended by words like shit, fuck, ass, low motherfucker, whatever, stop this podcast now. And by the way, this is the hardest podcast on earth. Hey, yo, what's up? This is Ice-T. And this is Mick Benzo. And this is the Final Level Podcast number number 48. Oh, shit. Right now, you listen to the hardest podcast on motherfucking earth, son. Change the dial, do something, go outside, run from the radio. Just don't fuck around with this if you are easily offended or you got some bitch up in you. We don't fuck around like that. And we don't do no gossip shit around Don't here, do man. gossip. What do we say? Whenever motherfuckers start telling me about who's fucking who or whatever, we say, you, you sound, sound like, like a, a bitch. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's how I jump off. We man, don't care know? about that. Men care about getting money. Hey, yo, you know what? Ice, number 47, right, was a repeat. Uh, two weeks ago of Chris, of Rock. Chris Rock, right? Because it was yes, Black sir. History yes, Month, sir. right? So we want to honor some of our black, you know, icons that we got in the music game, too. You know what I mean? Who's that? Oh, uh, shit. I hope he come through the door, man. He said oh. he was coming. Oh, we got... He oh, said it, he was coming, man. I, 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 that, that's how we going to bring him in? Now, like sometime, that? Sometime <laughs> black Sunday History on, Month? Yeah, you motherfucking right. It's February, nigga. You know what? Uh, this is Wednesday, and on Friday, I'm doing Aquarius Celebration at BB King's, man. Me, you, and my wife, and... You know, I've got a bunch of motherfuckers coming down, man. Hopefully, that nigga that come in here, I hope he, I hope he come for You real, think man. he's going to show up? Hey, he's a man. They word, say he's man. seldom seen. You know what I'm saying? That nigga's like ghost and ghost and he don't, he don't show up until it's really something happening. That nigga got a lot of He's going to come. He got a lot of wars. He fucks with Ice-T and McBenzo. Yeah, in the man. building, in the building, uh, a very respected, you know, legendary rap artist, fortunately from the golden age of hip-hop. It's murder. You know, and he's moved on now into yeah. new ventures. He's an actor. He got his foot in the reality world, and he sold millions and millions of records. Yeah. Please yeah. make some noise for the homie. Ja Rule. It's yeah. murder. <laughs> it's murder. What's happening, man? Big Ice, Big Meg. What's good, man? Oh, man. What's happening with you, baby? You know, man. That introduction was lovely, man. Thanks for having me, man. Thanks you know, for showing nah, up, man. Thanks for having you, me, Ice, you, for sure. You know, that's how I always said, right, real niggas, right? Real niggas is a phone call away, you know. Yeah, we called Ja. He said, I'll be there. No, this is what I'm saying. I asked you to call Ja this week. Ja Rule is sitting right in front of me. Yeah. Yep. Real niggas is a phone call away. Fake niggas got a million excuses, a bunch of bullshit. Instead of just saying <laughs> to no. you straight up, straight up like, I don't do fuck it. with you. Yeah, yeah, right. I'm not doing I don't it. want to yeah. fuck with you. <laughs> oh, well, get at my manager. Get it this, get yeah. it that. We don't I, fuck with managers, man. M- yeah. My boy Rich is in the house, one of my crimes from way back in the day. What's up, Big Rich? Oh. Chilling. We used to yeah. always say, we say, yo, your friend is not the nigga that parties with you. Your friend is the nigga that'll be waiting on you in the parking lot, in the rain, with the pistol. Real Ready tough. to get it in. Real when, tough. The sh- when the shit gets fucked up, Real tough. the nigga that's there when that goes down. All this <laughs> other shit. It's it call, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm popping bottles. Come on through. Niggas yeah. all show up. All but, that whack shit. But when the grimy yeah. call comes in, I need your help. Yeah, yeah, it's like I'm there, homie. You so, know which niggas is going to make that call to. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> so we called Ja Rule. It wasn't that type of a situation, but we called him about the podcast. He's sitting here, yeah, on the shrimp, dolo, oh, nobody. We don't do that by himself, wow. like real niggas do. You know. Chilling, <laughs> chilling. Niggas, n- people think, oh, well, you're a rapper. You got to walk around with 1,500 niggas. I mean, that maybe. That costs money, though. No, no, you might catch me with 1,500 niggas one night or one day. <laughs> yeah. But I don't roll with them niggas every motherfucking where. Real I can tough. have them, I can have them pop the fuck up. Yeah, but if I'm going to go see my friends, I don't, I'll show up dolo. So yeah, love is sure. love, baby. Thanks for showing up. job, boy. <laughs> Yo, this Fine Level Podcast, number 48, and this is sports. Hey, y'all, you know what I want to talk about real quick, man? Well, we got Ja Rule in the building, man. On on Sunday, there was a game. I think y'all call it the Stupid Bowl or the Super Bowl. Oh, shit. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. What was it? Super Bowl yeah. or Stupid Bowl? Super Bowl. It, saw, it was it wasn't the Super Bowl this weekend, but it was it was a good game. Well, to man. this nigga, oh, it was. Come on, man. Hold on, hold on. You talking about the oldest quarterback right now, man? Oh, you know, here we talking go. about Peyton Motherfucking Manning. Oh. Yeah, bust old that young school. boy on his ass, man. Hey, listen, it's a, it's a team game, man. You, they, they wasn't playing one on one. You know what I'm saying? Well, they didn't play the second half. They could listen. Do it let me now. tell you something. Let me tell you something, man. Okay. It was a great game. Mm-hmm. We ain't gonna uh, give Peyton all them props. He was <laughs> he he played a terrible game. You know what I'm saying? But 
you got to give it up to the boys that really brought that championship defense, home, and that's that defense. defense. That's Von defense. Miller. You know what I mean? That that's that's where and and, and that that whole squad, man. Talib, they brought it home. I just want right. to pick up it home. Ja Rule, let me tell you what a bad situation is. A real bad situation is I invite a bunch of motherfuckers over my house, my friends, close people over my house yeah. for <laughs> the Super Bowl. <laughs> Mickey was invited. Okay, Tretch was there. Different individuals, your friends yeah. with my people. No doubt. Mickey's like. Mickey comes through waving this Denver flag. Now everybody, <laughs> everybody in the building is with the Panthers. I watched the Panthers all season. I thought Cam Newton was indestructible. I know these kids has only lost one game. I how how the fuck can I be an old time Panther fan? Their new group team they anyway. Yeah, yeah. I like the Panthers. I mean, I'm a Black Panther old school. I mean, Panthers, <laughs> you know, like Panthers. I fucks with them. I'm rolling with the Panthers. You know I saying? fucks with them. So I'm like. Like, damn, they even let him name a goddamn group the Panthers. You know? <laughs> so I'm like, okay, I, I, I'm 100% sure wow. they're going to win. And this one nigga. Yeah, just one. Is in my house. There's 30 people. You were there, Rich. It was like 30 people. And he got, he got the Denver flag in the air. It's going in. And, <laughs> and he brutalized us. He abused us for a whole day to where I had to throw this nigga out of my house. He was in, oh, oh, sack him. Oh, what were you yelling? Oklahoma. He, Omaha, baby. Omaha. 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 <laughs> hey, look, man, that's just, you know, a little sports thing, you know, but we got my, my guys. I, I, felt, I felt so bad for Cam Newton. At the yeah. end of that game, I was like, I did, Cam, man. you wore the pants a little too soon. Like, <laughs> the I'm pants so was boy, out. Man. You're supposed to wear them pants after you win the Super Bowl. Yeah. You got a little premature with the pimping. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Those pants is definitely after the win pants. <laughs> <laughs> those, are definitely, those joints he had on is definitely after, after the, the win joints. You right. ain't never so lie. You got a little carried yeah. away. <laughs> You put the pants on too soon. <laughs> and then when Denver started, first when they snatched the ball out of his hand, the, like when he went back and was like on the one and they tried to oh, just man. take it. I Ron said, Miller. I was in the, I was in the Buster Ron and my Buster Ron's void. I'm just like, this shit is getting very disrespectful. <laughs> <laughs> They're very yeah. disrespectful right now. Yeah. Then. They just started punishing the nigga. Then the nigga was running backwards, and he, <laughs> it was like it got it real. Bad. Just it's it got re- bad real quick. It, it got yeah, very, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, very, you know the dude Von Miller that they went number one and number two in the draft. Cam went number one, Von went number two. Mm, so they so, had you know, a little, Von had, had a little heat. Yeah, he they had got a little, little thing with them. Yeah, 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 yeah. For sure. little, just for a sure. little something to prove. For sure, for sure. Yeah, got, fumble. Oh shit! They got. They didn't just whoop on him. It got they was like trying to sack him. It was very, very disrespectful. So when the shit was over, I heard Deion Sanders said some negative shit. I ain't saying no negative shit because I can't play pro football. I cannot beat the last nigga on the bench of the worst team <laughs> of any pro team. People talk about the pros. I'm like, pros are fucking pros. Yeah. That's why I, I don't give a fuck what you think. You yeah. think you play basketball? Tell me, let me tell you something about the basketball players. You can't beat the nigga on the bench of the last team, the wackest nigga on that bench will break your ankles. Oh, right? for sure. You, when you see Floyd Mayweather oh, fight, sure. and you like, oh, Floyd was bullshitting. The nigga that he whooped will beat your brakes <laughs> off. Right? <laughs> so when you fuck with pro athletes, respect yeah, yeah, them respect they crap. as that. Now, I said, with all humility, I believe Cam's dick probably won't get hard for like two months. <laughs> like, because as a man, when I take a loss like that, I'm not sexual. I'm like, my wife could be like, "Come on, baby, nah, fuck that. I just lost all this money." Because <laughs> our manhood is directly connected. See, I don't know. I'm just the opposite. Oh, when you lose, I, when I lose, I'm like, man, fuck. Somebody gonna take somebody gonna get <laughs> this motherfucking anger that I'm feeling. I'm gonna I, take it out on somebody. 
love it. I, I, I love it. So when you have a bad day, somebody, you about to go beat the brakes somebody, off yeah. something. Somebody got to get this punishment, man. Wow. When I lose, I just crawl in a corner like, no, nah, baby, I'm not a man right now. I can't. So I, I heard Cam ducked out and didn't do the press and all that. And No, nah, they, were, they were insulting him at the press conference. You know? It's sad. I mean, yo, but. He played his best game. And the best team won I, that game. Hey, I think that, let's put it like this. If he had won the Super Bowl, how much more could he grow? You know, I think this type of a thing, Man, he's yeah. going to come back. And we've all taken hits. And sometimes you got to take that hit yeah. to really – Get yeah. that real thick skin that you need to be yeah. a man and walk the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. Like you got it, and that yeah. hit. You know what I mean? Let me tell you, you know, some I don't know which uh, commentator it was, but they said an interesting, interesting thing, and they talked about Michael Jordan, mm-hmm. and they said, "Well, you know, I wonder what, what Mike would have did in that situation." Mm-hmm. But no one knows because no one ever seen Mike lose, right. so we don't know if Mike's like. A good loser or a bad loser, we mm. never know because he, he never lost. You know, so so sometimes you know it's 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 good for an athlete to go through that yeah. to get it out their system early, so they can kind of grow from that. Like right. you said, I, I I think that's good. It's going to be good for Cam because yeah. I I think he's a winner. He's won on every he's level. He's a bad man. He's, he's a won bad on every man. level. So I, you know he'll he'll be back. He's a bad man. I know he's just sitting there. I know he just went home probably and was like. Why in the fuck did I wear them pants? <laughs> <laughs> it's back to the. If I wouldn't why, wore the pants. Why, why did I celebrate? I had a chance. Too I early. Had a chance. I should have just stayed humble and won that motherfucking game and then came out in a cake. Hey, he on was these happy. He was happy. He made it to the Super Bowl. God bless him. Happy. I'm not a hater of Cam Newton. Yeah. I, no, I, no, I am one of his biggest supporters, yeah. the Panthers. I, I, I seen him destroy shit all year. My hats go off to Denver Broncos. That defense yeah. was wicked. Violent. Yeah. yeah. Very violent yeah. defense. Quick. Damn good game, though. Violent. Damn good game. Big up Denver. Carolina Panthers. See you next year. And That's that was sports. Yeah. Hey, yo, this final level podcast number 48 with Ja Rule. Hey, and yeah. this is TV. We're going to do some TV? And yeah. This TV. So, so, so now you're on television right now, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm doing a little TV thing. How did know? that happen? You know, I, I, I was getting offers to do like a family sitcom style type right, of show. Right, right, right. And you know, I was like, you know, the days of those shows are kind of, kind of gone. Right. You know, you know when they, we had Fresh Prince and right. single, you know, living single and those type of right. shows, the Queen show. Oh, in other words, an actor, a scripted thing. Right, right. a scripted style right, show. Right. You know, so for me, you know, the, the, the rap guy going into that. Mm-hmm. Those days are kind of passed, mm-hmm. you know, and, and so now I'm looking and I'm saying, okay, you know, the reality show is kind of like the new sitcom. You know, what, what as, better way to as do... As long as you don't do the buffoonery. As long as you don't do the buffoonery. If right. you do the, no, I'm, I'm talking family style right. show. You know, right. I'm like, what better way to do, you know, a family style show than with my family? You know, right. I, it, it was... I watched Run's House, enjoyed that. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, I watched T.I. and Tiny Show. Mm-hmm. I you know, enjoyed that. Mm-hmm. You know, so I was like, you know what? Me maybe, and Coco maybe, had one. You, I you was Coco. Coco. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. But mm-hmm. minus the kids. Minus right. the kids. Right. But you had the dogs. So right, that's right, the, right, right, right. <laughs> But family. You know, mm-hmm. the, and those type style shows are, 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 are good shows, you know. So I said, you know what? This could be a good vehicle for, for the family and for me to do this. So, mm-hmm. you know, I, I went ahead and, and, and dived into the arena. And, and, you know, not for nothing, I said, I'm having a good time, man. A lot of fun shooting the show. You right. Know, it's me and my family shooting the shit, having a good time. Now, did you do anything like I did with my show? I told him, I said, look, first I told him no 500 times. Me too. <laughs> then I finally said, all right, let's shoot a pilot. Yeah. We shot the pilot, and they liked the pilot. And I'm like, well, if we could do a show that's connected like this pilot, we can fuck with it, but yeah. I'm not with the dumb shit. Same shit I did. And uh, what I did, did you do anything to protect yourself? Like, I did this thing where I said, the shows will show Sunday. I need to see the shows on Wednesday. Or did you just say, I'll let you have control? Well, I let them I let them choose, you know, what what day and stuff. Because, you know, they do their research. No, I'm talking about when it, before it airs. Oh, before it airs. You mean as far as me telling them what I wanted out of the show? Well, what I did was... Every Sunday, the show would come on. Wednesday, I got that show. Oh yeah, absolutely. Do you see? Yes, yes, yes. Every episode, yes, I seen before it went out. 
So, you know, I was able, you know, I, I was you gotta executive protect yourself. producer you on my critique, show. You was able and, to critique and, your show. You no, I, I was very protective of my family. Right, right. You know, me doing it, going out and doing some crazy shit is one thing. But my family is a different thing. Real you know? talk. So, so I'm not going to, y'all ain't just going to do what the fuck y'all want to do with my family. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Real talk. So they was, they was very respectful of that or oh, wouldn't have happened. That's cool. You know, so which, which was cool. And I got, like like I said, I got to see every episode before it mm-hmm. now, now what happened with me, we did three seasons, so we did a total of 30 episodes. But right. we did, uh, I started seeing them on Wednesday. I never had to change anything Unique. meaning they had the yeah we i got to see it but yeah. i never had to change never, anything yeah. they they understood they from understood, the jump yeah. mm-hmm. it wasn't about the bullshit same thing see you know with you was probably the same thing you know you, you had a good rapport with your production team mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know so that was the same thing with me you know me and 51 minds were basically partners in this thing mm-hmm. so you know but fifty one nines could put out some ratchet, crazy bullshit. Oh yeah, too. absolutely. Because that you know they're a TV production company, right, so they're right. gonna put out Flavor of Love, <laughs> right. and Something then they'll do yeah. you know they mm-hmm. also do Ti and Tiny Show. So right. they you know they they do whatever the fuck is gonna make them the money. But mm-hmm. you know for me it you know I have a good relationship with Chris Abrego and and, and mm-hmm. Chris Chabari. So it was like all right, this is what we're gonna do, guys. You know we're gonna make this show good, clean family show. Mm-hmm. Because this is, you know, important to me how, you know, black families are portrayed, mm-hmm. you know, especially coming from a hip hop black family are portrayed on television. It's right. very important to me how that, uh, you know, so that they were, you know, they were very respectful. You, you got the understanding with 51 Minds, you make the show, yeah. people start to say, damn, this is a normal person, it's a normal motherfucker. Do you find that people like you more? Did it help? Did you feel your... Yeah, you know, um, I you know I, I think I was getting a bad rap, you know, uh-huh. you know the gun charge, this, this, that, the federal investigation, blah, blah, blah. you know. So I, you know, I, me just coming home, I I wanted people to see me differently, to see the real me, to see, see the, the guy you. that I am. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, like right. The, the guy that's at home with his family and his fucking wife and just enjoying life and and having a good time and, and being a father to his kids. I wanted people to see that. But see, the thing what they don't understand, and the thing of it is, is that. You could see me home playing video games with my dogs, but I'm still capable of going out and doing the most dumb, st- stupid shit you know, with my friends. You a- know. And that's what makes you real. So when you yeah. tell me about a gun charge, I'm like, well, that's his life. He's right. just living it's his life. It's life. life. He's living his life. It's but not- people don't understand that. I see. Because- like the, our <laughs> life yeah. to other people is not normal right. shit. Not normal. And, and, and now when I... It's crazy because when I take a step back and I look at it and I look at my kids mm-hmm. and I look at how my sons are growing up and my, how my daughter's growing up, you know, she's away at college. You know, my son, he's, he's, they don't know what poverty is. They don't know what struggle yeah. is. Real talk. So I, I, I look at them and he's like, yeah, yeah, he comes in. Yeah, yeah, dad, listen, uh, I need these uh, St. Laurent jeans. And I'm looking like, nigga, it's you motherfucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> a, <laughs> a, I tell him, I say, let me tell you something. So you know, my grandfather told me, he bought me a pair of Timberlands because I begged for Timberlands. I wanted to have, I had to have a pair of Timberlands because mm-hmm. he used to buy some old fucked up shits. Right. Them, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the, I forgot what they was called, but you know, the, the, the work boot shits that look like Tim. Yeah. yeah. But they wasn't the Tim to knock on bushes. Right. So he used to buy us those shits. So, he finally broke down and bought Pair. me and my uncle Pair Timbs. Mm. And he sat us down and he talked. He said, now listen to him. I'll tell you something. He said, now you see these shoes that I bought you that I begged for? Mm-hmm. He said, by the time y'all wear those out, you'll be old enough to buy your own. <laughs> 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 Don't ask me for no more. You know so those lessons stick with us. As we grow up, we appreciate shit as yeah. we start to accumulate do shit. You think, do you think, I kind of feel like we raised a generation of jaded youth. Like, my kid became the kid I used to hate. Yeah. Like, because I spoiled him. Like, Little Ice got picked up from the fucking hospital in a Rolls Royce. Yeah. The nigga wears $240 bathing eight sneakers. Yeah. They all, this is he, like, this, he, you know what I'm saying? He got, it, he got in the club at 15. Yeah. Why? Because I brought him in exactly. the club. Exactly. Now, he's 19. My, my son now is 24. It's like, what can he really rap about? Because he never had to do nothing. So now, the, like, he's like a hippie. Like, they like, they like, just get high, just party, and all that. I'm like, yeah. you know them as the kids we used to rob. Like you, <laughs> like you, 
you have never <laughs> <We're> struggled. <laughs> so now you are kind of like a, a, a yuppie kid, but I made you. So this is like a paradox. It's like yeah. we created these these brats. It's not. It's not us. It's the but, environment. But did we want them to it's be envi- us? It's but environment. Then, but then we really didn't want them to be us. No, we wanted we them to have a better we life. We didn't. We wanted them to be. But see, what's, what the beauty of what our kids are, Ice, mm-hmm. now here's the beauty of Give what our kids beauty, are. Give me some beauty because I'm struggling. No, here's the beauty <laughs> of what our kids are. They are that environment that they grew up in. Which was better than ours. Which is 100 times better than ours. Mm-hmm. But... They also know who their parents are and where their parents came from. And right. they understand our struggles and our story. So even though they didn't live it, mm-hmm. they got an edge, a slight edge well, I t- to them. I tell my son all the time, I'm like, you know, you may not want to be a gangster or nothing like that. But if you don't have a little bit of gangster in you, oh yeah, everything I'm able to hand to you, they will take they back. They will take it, yeah. Absolutely. They will take back. Absolutely. They know not to fuck with me. They know not to fuck with me. But yeah. if you got to have that little bit of edge that says. got to have a little bit of edge. Don't play me. We you can do have business, a little bit of edge. but don't play me. See, my, my thing was, my thing is I'm just going to take, take them to boxing and, and let them learn how to fight. Right. Because, you know, I, 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 yeah, because I look at my, my 15-year-old son. And I'm like, you think you tough. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, you ain't never even had a fight. Mm-hmm. Mm. You a punk, yo. Mm. Somebody will whoop your ass. I said, by the time I was your age, I said, go ask your grandma. I said, I, I got thrown out of kindergarten because mm-hmm. I fought every day. Kindergarten. Right, mm-hmm. right. I said, you 15 ain't never had a fight, man. Right. I said, see, that's the well, difference that's the from our worlds yeah. that we live in. I said, but but you know, don't, 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 don't fret. I said, I'm gonna take you. Over down to the boxing place, Teach you and your you little brother, and let y'all learn how to fight. Mickey you know, that's son. funny. He told me that yesterday, uh, Mickey Sunday. Son. He looked at my 13-year-old son and said, damn, man, that's a big dude, man. Yeah. Why don't you put him in boxing? Because you're growing up in a nice preppy place. You go yeah. to a nice little school. Yeah. You don't want him to be pushed around. He's not yeah. going to be pushed around because he's big, but he need to learn. His yeah, son walked up to me talking about, let me be your bodyguard. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, you're 13. Can you fight? No, no, no. I said, so I said, well, you got to be able to fight because you can't shoot. You're gonna send me to jail. Yeah. I said, you got to be able to push people up. So then we simulated something. Right. We had one of his br- other brothers walk up on me like he wanted to come up in my area, and then I had Jay. This is my up, dude, what's up, Jay. What's up, Jay? Jay, this is the big brother, my homie Ice. What's up, big homie? I'm 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 on LA. I'm on the West Coast, right, where y'all. And like I say, the first thing I ever seen was the the Murder Inc. situation. But was that the first time? I mean, did you rap before that? Am I? Where am I catching up? Yeah, in no, your career. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that. That's um. That's the beginning, but not the very beginning. What's the very you know beginning? I mean? The very beginning is, you know, I was with my group Cash Money Click. That was the beginning, beginning. Okay. You know, that was that was Mike Geronimo it was was Gotti's first act. You know, over at TVT Records and Steve Gottlieb, and, right? And that was a crazy situation over there. You know, but that's how I met Gotti. I met I met Gotti through my my my, my dude Chris Black was one of my group members. Right. And that's how I met Gotti. He used to be going over to Irv's studio doing mixtapes and shit with Mike Geronimo on them. So, you know, they took me over there one night and, you know, I spit for Gotti and, and you know, he fell in love with, with, with the with Well, the, well you in good the, company because Ger- Geronimo's voice. a beast. Mike yeah, Geronimo's yeah, Mike, a beast. Mike, 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 used, Mike used to go on him, man. He, you know, big up to Mike. You know, he's, he's, he's definitely started that. But that, that, that group didn't last. How did it end up with the Murder Inc.? Well, we, you know, we, we, <laughs> We was too smart for our own good, you know. <laughs> we figured we'd take the, the little bit of money that we made, you know, from 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 our record right, deal right. and and flip it and get some, some drugs and, and so forth and so on. So that didn't work right. out the way we planned. And my man Chris Black wound up doing five years. Wow. And, and that kind of split up the group, you know. So after that, I, I went solo. Mm-hmm. And... uh I was on hiatus for a while, you okay. know, because I couldn't get out of my deal with TVT. Right. So as, you know, things were starting to brighten up, you know, Jay was over at, you know, doing his his independent thing with Rockefeller and Biggs and Dame and them. And, you know, Irv, you know, brought X over to Def Jam. And, 
you know, X blew up, you know. Now, so. you knew Jay because Jay had actually worked on one of your songs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back in the day, you know, Jay was on Time to Build. X was on Time to Build. It was me, X, Mike Geronimo, uh, and Jay-Z on, on a record called Time to Build back in the day on, on, on Mike's album. Then they did a record on my album, you know, Jay, Jay and X. This is before they was who they were, you know. And then after that, they, they blew up. You know, they they did they thing. And, I you know, they... I was a little homie, you know, so the little homie was still on the come up. And, and when and when they got to Def Jam and was doing their thing, you know, I got in where I kind of fit in and, 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 and did my thing, too, with them. So so with all this, this this stuff happening, what was the moment where you fake felt like, okay, I finally broke? What, what song was that? that can you- I get Definitely can I get it. You know, that was, that was my first break. How did you get on that industry. song? I mean, how did how did it say Jay Z's gonna be on it, Emil's gonna be on it, and Ja Rule? How did that happen? Well, originally it was my record. Oh, okay. okay. For for my album. Okay. You know? So Jay heard the record, he liked the record, and you know, it was like, yo, let's you know, let's do something with that. So I was like, Yeah, let's, you know, why not? You know what I mean? So we did the record, you know, Can I Get a for Jay's mm-hmm. album and also for the Rush Hour soundtrack. Right. And that turned out to be a blessing in disguise because you know Def Jam wanted to push their their soundtrack with 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 the, with the big movie Rush Hour, mm-hmm. so they made "Can I Get It" the first single off the Rush Hour soundtrack, which right. was which was a beautiful thing for me. <laughs> and things just started to move from things there. just started to move from there. See, there's it, it, just so many layers to the story. You know right. what I mean? I'm trying to give you the quick the quick right. run of it. But, I, I, but so 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 what happened was. Jay heard the record. We did the trade off. Mm-hmm. He did a record, on, another record on my album. Right. I, I gave him that record for his album. Right. So we do the record. So now we shooting the video. We shooting the video, and uh, who was on the set? Uh, uh, my dude that, that shot. Uh, wow, why can't I think of his name right now? Man, that's a good friend too. Man. Um, he shot Rush Hi. Hour. He forgot. He shot Rush Hour. Um, oh, oh, Ratner, Brett. Yes, Brett, Brett Ratner. Yeah, Brett. Mm-hmm. So, so Brett's on the set, and you know, I was on my workout shit a little bit back mm-hmm. then, you mm-hmm. know. So he sees me in the back doing push ups, shit. So before that, you know, my my whole presence in the video was kind of like, I don't know, it was it was it, it didn't. It didn't pop. It didn't have nothing special to it. Jay, mm-hmm. you know, Jay was Jay. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Amir was the new female. You know what I mean? And mm-hmm. it was me. So. Brett was like, yo, I see you in the back back there working out shit, doing push-ups shit. Said, what, what you looking like under there? I said, hey, you know, I'm all right. He said, well, for this next shot, why don't you take your shirt off? I was like, ah, you know, Brett, I, you know, that's not really my thing. You know what I mean? I'm like, I'm cool. I got my leather jacket. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, I'm good. You know what I mean? You ain't, you ain't, you ain't one of them swole niggas that's like, oh, it's hot in here. Take yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, shit, man. Got that. You know, shit. I was, Bro, oh, shit, you hot. know what kind of you shape know? I was in? I, I was the skinny nigga. That just happened to have some abs because he was skinny and shit. You know what I'm saying? That was that was my build at the I, time. I, I used to hang with Tyson <laughs> Beckford, right? Tyson's fly ass. That motherfucker, <laughs> man, if the shit dropped one degree, that nigga's out of shirt. It's hot. It's hot. It's hot. Hot. hot as shit. Hot. Niggas was like, come on, Tyson. Yeah. Goddamn. Yeah. You ain't got to take your shirt off. The bitch yeah. already want to fuck Let me tell you, you go. I became that guy, Ice, <laughs> after this day. After this day. I think I don't. I, I, shirts was no more. I was chains and jeans. <laughs> it was all that was in my fucking closet. But, but, but that was a, a big moment for me too because it made me stand out, right, from everybody else. So now, that one scene is like the only scene he used for the whole video and shit. And, right. and, and, and so it made people say, "Yo, who's who's the kid with, with no shirt?" With the, you know, and 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 chicks started to dig me and shit like that, and 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 and, and you know things started to move better right right after that. So now you're getting awards left and right. Everything is going. You're doing all these different types of songs. Everything's cool. Yeah. Mickey tells me this wild story <laughs> about you, him, and Fat Joe in Africa <laughs> on some on some money run. You know, now we've jumped ahead. We've jumped to Ja Rule starting Murder Inc. Bow, hit with Jay Z. Now the girls love him. Shirts is off. Everything's good. <laughs> Making songs. The girls love him. You the, you you the niggas is hating. Goddamn. <laughs> Nigga, put your motherfucking shirt on. You know, you the little guy with the ass. Goddamn. But fuck it. My girl likes this nigga, so we got a problem. 
but now you go into Africa. Yeah. Now, this was this, Joe's this, first first flight. Tell me that this story for the for the for the podcast listeners. This is what we can bring to you on the final level podcast. Is shit you never heard before, <laughs> like things that only happen, like you know. Road stories, yeah, baby. Road yeah, stories. Yeah, I want to hear from the horses. I want to hear this story. Shit. I heard this story Not the other shit. night. I was at uh, Papoose's wedding, right? And Fat Joe was there, and I hear <laughs> the story from Fat Joe, <laughs> and I'm laughing my motherfucking ass off. So why don't you start the story? No, no, no. Let, let Joe take this care. This is ja Rule, ja, Fat ja, Joe. Ja had, no, ja had and been Mickey over. He had been over there before. We had. That was our first time bringing Joey Crack over there. Yeah. So I, you know. There's this dude named Rakinho over Rakinha. in Africa. Rakinho. Okay. So let me let, let me just give the, the, the listeners an overall view of who Rakinho is. <laughs> so Rakinho is like Edi Amin during the daytime and shit. <laughs> yeah. At nighttime, this motherfucker is like party promoter extraordinaire. <laughs> no, 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 extravaganza. He's, he's throwing extravaganza. extravaganza. You know what I'm saying? Edi Amin in the daytime. <laughs> So, so I had been over there and did did some shit with him before, you know, made some money with him before. Dude pays tremendous. Pays well. Pays well. So, I, so he wanted me to come back. He wanted to bring Fat Joe this time. I know my guy Fat Joe doesn't fly. Mm-hmm. Right. So I tell Crack, I said, Crack, let me tell you something. You're missing a lot of fucking money. You got this big ass record that that what's love record. I said, and you're not flying. I said, you know how much money you're passing up. Overseas, millions, millions. So I told him, I said, "Listen, this shit, this guy that wants to book you right now, Riquinho, I made about X amount of dollars with him. I, I don't know what last trip mm-hmm. I made him. Mm-hmm. Big, big, big mouth spread money. Look, look, you already, you already had your situation right, he with had them a- Alphabet Boys. So we don't right. talk about money. No. <laughs> yeah. Nigga, what money? You know what I'm right, right, right. So, talk about money no more. So we, 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 we scored over there with him. I scored over the first one. So I said, I said, crack, listen. You mm-hmm. gotta come over there. You're gonna have a good time with this dude. Fly. Take if you don't take another flight, take this one. Mm. Crack's like, I right, rule. I trust you. I'll go. There you go. I trust you. We go over to Africa. Had a good time. We was scheduled to do what? Three shows. We had three shows. Wasn't Ashanti supposed to go? Ashanti. Ashanti ended up. She was in. She canceled on us. She canceled on us, but she came to like. Like that other spot, like it was, we it was it's like right off of Africa. Yeah, I, know, I know you're talking about Portugal. No, was it Portugal? Portugal? Yes, no. she did. Was it? Yeah, she came because that's when we had. Oh man, what's his name? It might have been Port. I, I don't remember where it was, but anyway, it was right outside of Africa. So, you know, that wasn't Roquinho's turf. Right, right. So, so we get there, we do the shows, we get to our last show. Roquinho says, "No, no, no." No, no go. No, no go. go. Tomorrow. Tomorrow we put on another show. Extravaganza. Big show. Rikinho, we got to go home. No, no, no. No home. No home. No home. <laughs> Rikinho come with a bag of money. Yeah, yeah. Extravaganza. Here. No, no, no. But, but let, let's get to the part when the light cut out. <laughs> It was on me, you, Joe. Wait a minute, me, you, Joe, and Macho. Your security not there. Biff ain't there. Lights go out. I got a little nervous. So I touched the other guy. Like, like yeah. see if this nigga dirt. Now sit down. He looks at Fat Joe, and in Portuguese sounds like Spanish. He says, I don't like Macho Man. I want to kill him. And he, and he asks, Joe asks Macho, Mach, what the fuck did you do to him? He thought you was Macho? No, he said, I don't like Macho Man. Oh, you. So Joey Crack is asking Macho, what the fuck did you do, B? His man Macho. Right, right, right. But he was referring to you as Macho Man. Right, then the next day he comes, he's talking (laughs) to Joe, he's looking at me, and Joe says, Mech, he really wants to kill you. <laughs> Yo, he like, wanted to me? kill you and D-Life. I said, me? I skipped the fuck. I said, he want to kill us. Yeah. Nah, I he want to kill y'all. you and D-Life. Yo, DJ. <laughs> he my Yo, DJ. DJ. Yo, yeah, right. Yo, no, look. Look, I'm going to put Fat Joe on blast, right? Fat Joe tells me, he said, Ice. So the nigga wanted me to go to some afternoon shit. And I went with him to go meet the prime minister or some shit. And the nigga opened his trunk. <laughs> 
<laughs> and he had like $10 so much million dollars <laughs> in cash. Joe said he looked at the nigga like he said, Ice, I thought about killing this nigga. <laughs> like, he said, Ice, dude had ten million in cash in a trunk. And he said the nigga like reached in there with two fingers and just pulled out like Half a million dollar, like threw it at him, like here. Like, the nigga, like, he said, but Joe said with, with all seriousness, I just thought about killing. <laughs> like, no. like murder shot through his brain. Nah, like but that, you can't real, show a street nigga on the real ten tip, nah. million in cash. Young idiot main had people downstairs with. Rifles, guns, and oh, he, nah, he, he no, let me tell would you. stop the police. He was a tyrant, yo. It, he yo, would stop the I, cops. Listen, he went into the fucking hotel one day. I think it was one, it was like, the, I don't know, maybe the fifth show or some shit that he wanted us to stay for. And I don't think he had like the money on, all the money on him. On the, he went into the hotel and looked at the lady in the hotel and said, get, Go in the back, get the money. Yo, and she came out with the money. Like, yo, like, here's the rest of the money. Yo, this dude, yo, he, crazy. And, and then and then Joe said the nigga was manhandling the president. Like, the president was in the room. <laughs> and, then, and then homie, like, you had the president, like, yo, hey, hey, yeah, I'm talking yeah. to you. Like, snatch the president. Yeah. president, like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> like, yeah. like, imagine a nigga that's grabbing, yoking up Obama, like, yo, son, call me right quick. Let me holler at you right quick. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, he, he was. Told, he, he, yo. Told me, he told me, don't go to the uh, um, the council when I got there. I said, you know what? I got to go. No, 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 no. I bring you here. You go nowhere. Everybody stay in the hotel. I'm like, you done lost your motherfucking mind, bro. I told him, my record label told me I have to go visit DP. That's when we went to the hospital to yeah, um, uh-huh. you know, see the people with the legs get mm-hmm. blowed off. And, no, 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 no. And I'm hanging out with Ja. And Joe, make man, it's seven of us, and we should all stay together. <laughs> we should not be going out with Ja Rule. Ja Rule is out of control. <laughs> Yo, let me tell you, I took Joe to some crazy places, man. You wasn't with us when I took him to Brazil. Uh-uh, no, no, no. Holy shit. shit. Don't put nobody on blast now, Ja Rule. No, nah, he's careful. just saying there was so much hey, money yo, out there. Yo, no, let me tell you about it. I know about Brazil. Brazil is very provocative. Yo, no, 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 no. This was the craziest trip ever, Ice, <laughs> because I, I I was taking crack to perform in the favelas oh, for Lord. the first time. I had did. I was the only artist that ever did it. Mm-hmm. When I tell you this is the craziest shit, like so, the first time I ever did it, right? I'm going up into the to the up into the favelas. The one way su- in, one way out. The super ghetto. Yo, the super ghetto. You think you think <laughs> your hood is hood? You ain't seen hood, motherfucker. <laughs> so yo, so we we going up in this shit. So I got the police uh, escort. escorts dudes with me. We get to the bottom of the hill. They get out and come on the bus and say, "Look, y'all on your own from here." <laughs> so they, police don't. We go don't up go in up there. there. Where's the mother? That's what he told us. Y'all on your own for me. So now I'm looking like, well, what the fuck? I done got myself into. Listen, man, let's we up, man. Let's go, man. We ain't got time for this shit. We go up into the shit. Now the, the bus couldn't fit all the way up the favela. Ice this motherfuckers all outside. Kids, also, I'm talking niggas is up in the windows with their pistols out. Motherfuckers, kids on the streets, pistols out. I mean, all types of pistols just out. Yeah, it's like wild. Like it's like wild, wild west. Mm. The bus gets stopped. City of God up in there. City of Gods. I can't <laughs> go no further on the bus. So they tell us, yo, we're going to have to get out and walk up the rest. So I'm like, all right, come on, cool. You know, I'm not, I'm still not knowing what I'm getting myself into, Ice. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I'm not realizing this. I'm like, all right, so, all right well, let's do it. Get out the bus. So now the dude that's escorting me is he's some dude from fucking Brazil. He got the big four fifth on him like this. Back up, back up. <laughs> <laughs> he pointed at the niggas. This is how he's escorting me up. Said, back up, get back in the window. Back in the window. Back up. Yo, he's taking me up the hill, taking me up the hill. So, <laughs> yo, <laughs> it was crazy love. And and what the dude told me is the dude, now, yo, this is the crazy shit. The dude that run the whole shit mm-hmm. looked like Brazilian Jay-Z. I swear <laughs> to God. <laughs> I swear to God, he looked like a Brazilian Jay Z. So he comes in, and he got like a broad that's like Beyonce. She flies shit and shit. So they come in and shit, and, and he sit down. So now they gave me a gold four fifth, like a forty five, yeah, forty five gold shit. Like yeah, this is this for you, you know. Hold on to that, and I'm like, 
the fuck I'm gonna do with this? Like, like I can't take it can't home. Take shit. Home. You know what I'm saying? Right, yeah, right, like, right, right. So I'm holding it, fucking with, it, taking pictures, and shit with it, all that. He come in and he sees me. He's like, yo, you know, he comes, he talks to me and shit. He can't really speak good English. He comes and talks to me. So I show him shit. I'm like, yo, you know, good looking. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. He pulls out his joint with the beam on it, like. Mm, nice, you know what I'm saying? Show me his, everybody's arm. Everybody's arm. Everybody's arm. <laughs> so now, long story short, so this was my experience there the first time. So right. now the, the second run, they're like, "Yo, come bring Fat Joe." Fat Joe. Fat Joe. I'm like, "Yeah, my nigga, crack a lot of come to favela, crack, crack, crack a gangster street. Do you love this? You love it." We get there, crack is like, "Yo." I'm not fucking with you, Rue. Yo, <laughs> yo, yo, I sw- yo, I can see Fat Joe. Yo, I swear to God, like a kid had like an RPG or some shit, like a, <laughs> like a rocket launcher or some shit on his shoulder. And Crack was like, yo, Rue, why are we here? Like, what are we why, doing? No, no, yo, says, yo, it was, why yeah. are we here? Aren't we yo, hustling to get out of the ghetto? Yeah, like, yeah. why are you taking it was me? A, yo, me and Crack have been on some good adventures, man. Some good adventures, man. But that was another one. Crack was like, listen... I, so after the first show, I got cracked back in the room. Cracked said, "Listen," he said, "Rule." He said, "You know, <laughs> I'm a real nigga. <laughs> Fuck with all the gangsters. You know me, rule. Right? I don't know if I'm going to that shit tomorrow." <laughs> 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 yeah, I said crack. I said crack. I, said, crack. I don't blame him. Big up no, crack. But, I told him, but here's what I told him. I said crack. Let me tell you something. I said, here's what you got to know about these niggas here. They love they us. They love you. No, they love crack. They love yes, us. They love, love us. Saying. They love you. You know what I'm saying? They love, they, love they want us to be here. I said, don't other rappers don't come here and go up in there and perform. Right. So to them, we you know, they just want to show us love. They want motherfuckers to come up there and show them the love. You know what, right, what I'm saying? Right. I said, so I said, crack, let me tell you something. I said, real talk. We're safer up there than we are in this hotel room right now. I said, if they right. want to come down there and get us there, they turn this whole motherfucking town. Yeah, so we got to bring ice up in there. You know, oh, yeah, we got to bring what? ice up in there. <laughs> <laughs> ice, they'll let us see you up in there, baby. Right, Brazil, they'll let baby. let us see ice up in the favelas, I make, man. I make a conscious decision just anytime I'm around black people. <laughs> You know, me, myself, I I busted my ass to get the fuck out of the motherfucking hood. I can't die in the hood. I always said, said I, got, I can't die in the hood. I, said, I always got to die someplace I should be. Like, I got to slip in Gucci's or something. You know, I can't. Nigga can't get shot in somebody's projects. His niggas be like, at my funeral, like, Dumb motherfucker, like what yeah, the fuck is that nigga doing there? What was the nigga doing nigga there anyway? Be there. I gotta flip a Ferrari. I gotta oh, do something. Shit. I'll tell you a quick story, real quick. I was with Public Enemy, so we were in uh, Bosnia, and um, we we at this hotel, and some war is going on. Yeah. The war, so we perform where the motherfucker kids are coming from the war. So we're like, what about this hotel? Like, ain't we kind of close to the front? Oh, don't worry about this hotel. It's cool. It's, this is a, uh, <laughs> this is the U, UN, UN troops. All the cats with the blue helmets are there. So, so I'm like, you know, it's got to be safe. This is the UN shit. So we go do the show. So we go do the show. We're in, I, I don't know, Serbia or whatever. And it's like thousands and thousands of kids. They came from the war. Like the war was happening. They left the war. They come to the concert. Come to the right, concert. Right. right? So, like, cool. So that night, we spend the night in the hotel. So we're a weekend to the show. We're now someplace in Germany. Away from it, Chuck's like, yo, check this out, Ice. They leveled the hotel. That hotel got (laughs) blown to, like, dust. Mm. I'm like, wow. yo, this shit is really seriously hectic over here. So now, and I always think about that when I'm in Europe and you're in the Middle East and Mm -hmm. you're flying around. You're flying over war. Like, there's wars going on Mm -hmm. down beneath you. Absolutely. You're just not landing on them. I'm like, shit is hot. Like, when you're in Africa, you're flying over, this nigga's wilding down there. Absolutely. The plane just didn't land, but you're going over to, you know, some hot terrain it ain't like you coming over to watch powers or you coming into la yeah. and you wrote when you fly in over la you rolling over some hot turf mm-hmm. them niggas is busting rounds off down there below you yeah so when you take me out of the country i'm very cautious i, I watch locked up abroad uh <laughs> that tv show <laughs> and ja Rule, i'm at a point right now man where to me i'm at an age where going to prison is a life sentence to me me so, too brother i'm shit i'm 40 yeah. i'm good yeah. i don't want no more yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah so so speaking of speaking of that like you just came back from a little bit when you went through that little situation yeah did anyone support you hip-hop to me is very 
dysfunctional. Like very. They 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 love you. Then when you keep it real, they like fuck you. Like yeah. we were talking about Bobby Smurdit. Oh, he's stupid. Right. Oh, he's yeah. real. Oh, he's stupid now. So th- when you do have a hardship in hip hop, does hip hop ride with you or just certain fans? Certain fans. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean. And certain people. You know, friends, right. people that you really can call friends and, you know, whatever. You, you, I mean, you know how that shit is. How I long just, was you stuck recently? Two years. I did 24 months. So what's that like being in, I mean, you feel, can we talk? A, uh, yeah, it's cool. Uh, uh, when, 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 what's that like going in prison as a, as a star? It's, you know, it's the craziest shit because everybody's waiting for you to get there. Right. <laughs> it's like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We was waiting. We knew Rue was coming through it. They they knew. They everybody knew I was coming to the island and they knew right. I was coming upstairs. They, they heard I was coming to these facilities, you know, even facilities I wasn't going to heard I was coming to these facilities, right, you know. Right, so right. you know, it's it can go either way. Right. You know? Um niggas wanna be a part of your world and wanna fuck with you. Mm-hmm. But they wanna know you're a real nigga too. Right. So you know how it is, Ice, a nigga gauge you, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? Let me see what this nigga's about, you know what I mean? Let me see if I could friendly extort a nigga, you know what I'm saying? Right. Know, that's that's their first move, the you old, know what I'm saying? Like the, the old friendly <laughs> extortion. Yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying? That's their that's they first move. When a nigga know not nigga, I'm, stop it, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm fucking get out of here. I'm hip to game, nigga. Stop, stop it, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Do I got any motherfucking yeah. fuck shit. out of here, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Did you get some cheese in this so, nigga? So I you, got you, mine. So you know but when, you when, by yourself, but you're by yourself. Yeah, So but but you know, so so that's that's how I went into the to the situation, you know what I'm saying? Oh, my God, real, you know, Real, real, you know. So I, I spoke to uh, the homie. I spoke to Preem before I went in. He was like, he's like, see, nigga, you know what I'm saying, nigga? You got you to learn how to bed, nigga. You know what I'm saying? He's like, mm-hmm. he said, I'm first thing I'm going to tell you, niggas, don't go in there all flashing and shit. Mm-hmm. He said, niggas know you got money. He said, don't go in there, you know what I'm saying, buying up a whole bunch of sneakers and snacks and all that shit day one. He said, just go in there and be a regular nigga. Mm-hmm. And so that that resonated with me. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know what? I'm not Ja Rule in here. Yeah. Even though I am, I'm not. I'm one of these niggas. Mm-hmm. So let me think like one of these niggas while I'm in here. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So that, that's how I approached it. I approached it real, you know, real ground roots. Like I'm Did going people here. come visit you? Did any people come visit? You know, some, you know. Some people you didn't, you expected? Some people, some people didn't. I didn't expect, yeah. Some, you know, but I got a lot of letters from people I didn't expect, you know, um, that that's a situation when you in there, you just want any any kind of love, a nigga. Right. Send a nigga a picture or something, man. You know Send anything, nigga. You know what I'm so me, me and Rich, my boy, that's here with me tonight. We got a friend that just came home. He did twenty three. Yeah. And uh, you know, he was like, "Yo, he did ten years before he made a phone call." Yeah. You know, when you catch them real heavy uh-huh. cases, he's like, "I I I just ride the shit out." But his whole mentality is like, "Yo." Now that I'm home, only a few of you niggas reached me. Like, you know, mm-hmm. I was one of the people that helped yeah, 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 me get yeah. out. But his whole circle is tight now. Yeah. Like, is your circle tighter now? Absolutely. Airtight. But, but see, you know what I also learned about about being in jail? You know, um, and I had to apologize to my man Black because, you know, he did the five years and shit. And, you know, and, you know we spoke and you know, I put him on the albums and... You know, we sent him, you know, stuff. And, you know, when he came home, we made sure he was writing and all that. But once I, you know, once I was behind the wall, I understood that all of that shit was cool. But what what meant more is that visit. The support. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, that, yeah. that going to see, see a him. nigga. You know yeah. what I'm saying? That, 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 those visits and, and you know, that, that communication and the letters and, and, and the phone calls, that shit mean more than sending a nigga a package. Right. Or, you know what I mean? So... I didn't realize that until I got behind the wall. I thought, you know, me being there for him financially was was the end all be all. Like niggas ain't don't you know niggas don't take care of the niggas in jail. Right. You know, so I'm thinking me holding them down in there was like was right. the one. The you know, would have been even right. Better. But the visits and the, and, and 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 all of that would have been a, so now been now now at you forty years old, two years just recently. Do you feel that that like prepared you for the rest of the way out? Like, I mean, was that like a a, yeah. a, a doctorate of of, of let me get my I get my shit let me get together. my shit together. You ain't never lied. That that was the wake up call. You know what I'm saying? Because 
you know, up until that point, you know, Ice, you know, niggas still running around with his pistol and shit. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. You're and a rock just, star. Yeah, You're it's wild. Just, it's just like, you know, ain't nothing to it. That is like putting on my shoes and shit. You know what I'm saying? It was, right. it was, it was, grab a pistol. You know what I'm saying? Going out. You know what I mean? Right. So, but then I, you know, I had to realize that, you know, there's a bigger picture for me. You know, I got a lot to lose. Like Prod- Prodigy told me from Mob Deep, he said, he said, Ice, you post-prison. You're a post-prison nigga. Like, niggas that ain't been to joint won't understand you. Like, your wisdom comes yeah. from niggas that been through it. Yeah. And when you talk, your, 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 your method, how humble you are, how cool it is, that won't resonate with niggas that ain't been to prison yet. Yeah. They think you soft. Yeah. But when you come home, niggas can listen. Like, yeah. like Super G shit. Yeah. It's like, because... You got, pre, even with rap, you got pre-prison rap and you got after-prison rap. Mm-hmm. Like, And so I'm like, like I said, oh, gee, that invincible shit don't work. Yeah. I throw you in the joint, you'll be coming out feet first. Yeah. And a lot of niggas used to tell me, say, Ice, man, your record didn't make sense until I went to jail. Like, yeah. Once you went, I went to jail, I heard what you were saying. Yeah. So now, let's let's wrap this up, though. Now you home. Yeah. You back. Yeah. Smaller group of friends. Yeah. Uh. Hip hop has gone and put on skinny jeans and yeah, dresses yeah. and all kinds of new shit. Yeah, all kinds of weirdo all shit. Kinds of weird shit. <laughs> Where do you fit in? What's your move? What's what 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 is the next move for for ja Rule? Where, where you going? We know we, we the OGs now, right? right? You know what I mean. Um, it's time to pay it forward. Mm-hmm. You know that that's how I see you know my role now. You know, and 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 you know what I don't say the skinny jeans in a negative way. I'm just saying yeah. a nigga like me can never fit into that. Yeah. So yeah. I got to find my own lane. Yeah. If, they, if, if they over here doing that, I'm like, mm. yeah. I mean, shit. When y'all when, when it started, I look at I look at this shit. Bambada and them was wearing this shit. I'm yeah. like, I'm, I'm wearing that shit neither. You know what I'm saying? And, exactly. and Kaz and and and, and Furious Five. The shit that they was wearing was, was like the tight, shit Rick James and shit was wearing. Man, I'm not wearing that shit neither. Yeah. So you know, you know it was <clears> funny. It's funny when I started, I got with Africa Islam, and Africa Islam had me and a bunch of motherfucking spikes. <laughs> and all kind of, when I was yeah. in break, you remember Mickey? Yeah. I had on yeah. spikes and all that kind of shit. Now nah, those were yeah. records. Tight, tight jeans are the latest thing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That's what we're doing. Nas yeah. come, but we wasn't we weren't wearing them tight and sagging. They doing the, they doing the yeah. whole skin. Listen, man. It's you know, different. you know, it's for different. me, it's 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 it's, it's hip hop. Yeah, and it's, it's gonna it's, it's, it's gonna go through phases. It's, it's gonna go through phases. The kids, you know, it's always it's always gonna be a youthful driven music, even mm-hmm. though it's getting older and older and older because you know you grew up in mm-hmm. hip hop and I grew up in hip hop and now I'm 40 and mm-hmm. you know you 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 I don't know in my 50s and, yeah and shit I didn't even know you that old I was gonna say 45 46 mm-hmm. but you know you did you know and, and so you got Russell who's probably in the 60s now mm-hmm. so it's like hip hop is that old mm-hmm. and when we were young the difference between what we're going through with our kids is our parents didn't listen to what we listened to right you know what I'm saying so that that gap was real was real wide. It's being able to be bridged a lot easier now because we're listening to the same genre of music at least. Something, yeah. You know, I may not be listening to to Shy Glizzy or, or or you know some of the shit that Lil Rule is, is listening to or Jordan's listening to, but I'm still listening to hip hop. I'm still functioning in hip hop. I'm still a hip hop head. One thing one thing that uh, one of my boys told me he said Ice the coolest thing about Little Ice having you as a father is that. He knows, and his friends know that no matter what, his dad is cooler than his friends. Yeah. Like, regard, yeah. he could always say, my dad said that shit's whack. Right. And they like, well, wait a minute, we can't really challenge we your, can't, dad. Exactly. your dad. Exactly. Down exactly. 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 Now it's funny with my son, he just called me up talking about, I want to, can I get control? What's going on with your merchandise? What's going on with your classic shit? Right. Because. I want to bring it back out under something called classic material, and I want to put it back on the because sh- the kids now are like reaching. They're back. going back. <laughs> They're going back. Right. They might say, I, you know, do I really want to? You know, no disrespect. Do I want to wear a Drake shirt, or would I rather wear an NWA shirt? Yeah. And so, even listen, Drake is current. They're like, I rather rock my son's a, a, fucking a slick Rick shirt. My son's Avi on his Instagram uh, page is a picture of Easy. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. they they you know they reaching back and going Fine. and yeah. going to find. But I, I I teach him that too. You know, like listen, man, you wanna you wanna study hip hop. You wanna be a student of hip hop. You don't just wanna be a dude that knows the current 
hip hop. I said, I said, listen, I said, look at me. I said, look at your pops. Look at your mother. I said, you think we just know modern day R and B or R and B of our era? No, I know what my parents listen to. You know what I'm saying? I know the shit that they parents listen to. The hits. You gotta, you gotta go back and listen to the, to, to all of this. You don't want to be a trumpet player playing jazz and somebody says Miles Davis and you and you be like who the fuck is Miles Davis? you don't want to be that guy but these hip hop kids <laughs> you can what? ask them who's cool Herc and they, they don't give know. a fuck about not knowing that's bad well they that well that might not be the ones that might stand the test I think you know when I came in like I said I needed to understand New York history I needed to be for me I needed to be accepted by the Zulu nation yeah. I wanted to be part of the culture and the culture taught me do not disrespect it like if we let you right. in don't disrespect this shit yeah you know it's like being in letting into a gang like nigga yeah if, yeah if, yeah, if you're yeah. part of hip-hop yeah. you're gonna be held accountable yeah and don't get on the radio and say no dumb shit or just disrespect the culture because yeah. a lot of people's lives are about but so back to the final question where's what's what's up with rule where, where what do we expect to see and I, I see you doing concerts i'm following you on twitter yeah i you know i run around a lot do a lot of concerts you know um i'm starting you know a new company you know i got i'm doing some some stuff in the tech world and why not yeah you know so i just you know I, i'm i'm just I'm just having a lot of fun with my life right now, enjoying life. You know, I'm, I'm about to put together my new album, mm -hmm. which is, I'm, I'm this is this is a, you know announcement I'm making for the first time, but this is this is gonna be my last album. Okay. You know, and then uh, you know, like I it's said, be your last time till you catch the feeling again. That's what I always say. Yeah, you know how that go, Ice. You know, you know, I, I'm I'm never gonna stop making music. You but know, you I love the I love, album, and then somebody yeah. calls from Microsoft, say, Jay, ja Rule, we need you to do this song for this uh, right. such and such you right. for this movie right. or something. You and like you what's with, with, Give me the track. Let me what's dust, let me dust <laughs> off my track. And like that just happened the other day. I just got a call to do something for for HBO and, yeah. and, and, and you know for this documentary. And I'm like, you know that I got y'all. You know what I mean? So I, I, I I'm I'm always you know, ready to record me, but just me personally, mm -hmm. you know, I, I'm, I'm like, you know what? It's time for me to, to, to go on and do other things and kind of pay it forward to the younger cats and the, in the Can younger I give generation. You some game? Let me give you some game. We've been on every cover of magazine. We've been, yeah. I've been on, I've been the main topic on rap shows. I, 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 I yeah. caused so much chaos. The president came after me. <laughs> so why not let the other kids have the covers? It's time for them. Yeah. I can't, Absolutely. Those covers. But hip hop was a chance for me to get out of what I was doing. It was a step out. Mm -hmm. Now that I got my step out of the hood and I could see around, why not get in a tech company? Absolutely. Why not act? Why not Absolutely. do this? Hip hop is that fucking step out of the gutter. Absolutely. It's the step out of the gutter Absolutely. that puts you on a level to finally look yeah. around. Yeah. And see what the fuck you might want to do. Yeah, it's not the final step; it's the first. step. It's the first step. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's a journey, you know. But you know, there's 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 so many things that 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 I want to accomplish and I want to do that I that I haven't done yet. You know, um, music was like you said that was my first step. You know, the acting thing. I love I love acting. Got some great new uh, roles coming up and right. some great films. You know, so that that's that's incredible. But but even that. I miss I'm missing a little something when I when I do that. You know, I, I'm so used to creating that just I'm missing that. You know, I, I, I absolutely no ice, a hundred percent serious. Dude, dude, it's a uh, real it's a real crap. One of my pimp buddies came at me. He said, uh, "Pimp Ricky Ricardo said to me, he say, uh, let me ask you something, Ice. Let me ask you something, player. Yeah. How much money you make on an album? If you made an album, I said, well, you know, an album." You get about a dollar a record, so if you sold yeah. a million records, that's a million dollars. He says, okay, you got to pay other people, too. I was like, yeah, you got to pay taxes, producers. He says, okay. How much money Will Smith is making for a movie? I said, $20 million. A movie, yeah. He says, well, I'm, that's none of my business, Sykes, but if, if I had my pinky toe in that acting game... Yeah. Wouldn't it be smart to mash into that game when you already know the top limit in the record mm -hmm. game? You got your pinky toe yeah. in the game over there. Yeah. I, wouldn't it be? And I was like, see, it takes a real player to really size it up from yeah. a non-emotional state. So after I got that game from him, I went from doing four episodes on Law and Order. I've been on that show 17 years. Yeah. 
17 and the check's clear. The check, oh, oh, fuck yeah. And the check's clear. So I had to reformat my hustle because if we go back to the beginning of your story, yeah. you're basically a hustler. We hustle. You hustle. You took your first money you got from a record and flipped yeah. it. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Right? So now you at that point in your life where you like, I I, I kind of got my accolades with music. I need to get paper now. What what other ways can I parlay this genius that I am into yeah. getting some more cake out here so I can? But see, you know, you know what's crazy life. about me, Ice is I'm I'm like a I'm 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 driven on creativity. Yeah, like that. Like it's you're that. an artist, right? So so when I first got into music. Mm-hmm. That was my thought. Like, you know what? Yo, I got a new hustle. Nigga. I'm getting this rap shit. Mm-hmm. Motherfucker make some, make some money. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. As I got into it, started to study and become a student of hip hop, I really fell in love with what I had the art become and what yeah the art and what I had become. You know, I had become an artist that can touch people. Mm-hmm. You know, I could make this great music and touch people all over the world. Mm-hmm. I go to fucking countries and these motherfuckers don't speak no English or don't know what the fuck I'm saying, but they know every word of my music. You know, mm-hmm. so I started to really enjoy that and, and, and become, you know, an artiste, you know. And so as I, you know, as as I get out of the music business and, and, and fold into other businesses like, you know, producing films, stuff, right. I want to control it. You know, so I can create it, mm-hmm. and it's the same thing with the tech tech business. Like like how you just said, the difference in hustles. Russell Simmons, Leo Cohen, Rick Rubin had arguably the the biggest you know rap label of all mm-hmm. times, Def Jam Records. When I came to that, <clears throat> when I came to Def Jam, they were about to lose the company. It was mm-hmm. about to dissolve Def Jam into Universal. You mm-hmm. know. Luckily, that didn't happen. Me and X came. Jay came. We started selling a gang of records. Company thrives. They sell a company that they worked hard for. 20, 25 years, blood, sweat, and tears. All the biggest artists, you know, all the greatest hip-hop acts for like $120 million. Mm-hmm. Fast forward to now. I got involved with this tech company, this this credit card company with my partner Billy Magnesis, uh Billy McFarland. He has a company called Magnesis. He had the company for four years. There's companies that want to buy his company mm-hmm. for fifty to a hundred million dollars in mm-hmm. four years. Right. That's that tech money. That's that tech money. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, something's not right here. You know what I'm saying? Like, do I want to work a fucking twenty years mm-hmm. to make what I could get in Five years, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it's 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 a passion thing. You know what I'm saying? Because that's why we do it for music. What's going to end up happening is you're going to pick out what's most important to you. What's the most fun to do? It's going to be fun to you. If you're doing tech, it's going to become fun to you. Yo, it's fun. It's, it's going to be fun. fun to you. Yeah. And like my word, I use in my life now is important. Like everything I do that wins is important. Like the yeah. art of rap, the movie you should have been in. Yeah. It's important. If I do something, it needs to be. This podcast is important yeah. because it gives people a chance to feel you. If I put you on the radio for five minutes, all you're going to do is hype your record. You don't. They don't get a chance yeah. to feel you. This Ja Rule episode will last forever. Yeah. You could post this forever and say, yo, check. If you fucking yeah. want to hear what the fuck I got to say, <laughs> no hype and get a vibe of, of yeah. me, listen to me and Ice chop it up for an hour. Yeah. yeah. Uh, good luck, man, with anything you're into. Oh, yeah, You man. got my number, nigga. I'm yeah. a player, too. Sometimes two players in the pod can make it even happen, qu- happen quicker. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. These are my business partners. We're making yeah. moves. And the beauty of being a musician is you're always going to be able to have that stage you can hit. I could do a con- I could do a tour right now. Absolutely. All I got to do is say, yo, set me up a tour. Right. And let's go. And since you got that catalog, you can, you go, can out. go Whether, yeah. you, whether you're performing for 1,000 people, yep. 5,000 people, or 500 yep. people, you can always get that rush. And go out. My nigga told me, nigga, you like Frank Sinatra, nigga. You got a catalog. You ain't got to make no more records. Yeah. Niggas love you. Just go out and do Ice-T and just, 
I, I say I'll be singing. I am a nightmare walking. Yeah. Psychopath talk. Yo, yes, that's funny shit, because, yo, I do this. I, yo, uh, I, that's a lot. I do the same. I said, I'm going to end up in Vegas talking about fucking, uh, uh baby. Uh, and I, I'm just saying, yo, <laughs> yo, that's fucking hilarious. King of my yo. jungle. Hey, <laughs> I'm just a gangster. Yeah. <laughs> Suck a die for your life when the shotgun scatters. Yeah. You know, because what you did was legendary. What you did is forever. And. When you say Ja Rule, niggas already know. They like, yeah. oh, I either fuck with him or I don't. Yeah. And that's really what it is. When you say Ice-T, people go, I fuck with him or I don't. Yeah. And the niggas that fuck with you really fuck with you. Absolutely. The niggas that don't, fuck them bitch-ass niggas in <laughs> yeah. the motherfucking way. Yo, you, know, you, know, you know what it is, too, though, Ice? It's about con- you know, continually contributing to hip-hop. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You, over the years, have continually contributed to hip-hop, whether it be through film, television, or, you know, your your endeavors, your business endeavors, whatever, you continually con- c- contributed to hip-hop. And I think that's important for the longevity of artists. It's just not about the music. Well, that's you know why I, mean? I kept my name. Yeah. That's why I'm on Law & Order. I could be my real name, Tracy Loren Merrill. I could be Loren Merrill. I could be Tracy. But I said, I want people to look at me and say, Ice-T? the fuck is Ice-T? Yeah. Oh, that's a rapper. I don't like rappers. Right. Well, you like him, don't you? Yeah. That's why Queen Latifah is still Queen Latifah. Yeah. That's me saying back that you might not think you like hip hop. I'm gonna make you like hip hop, motherfucker. Because yeah. I'm not changing my name, and you, you gonna have to accept a little bit of hip hop with me. But you got another phone call coming from me and Mickey, and that's the concert we got coming. Yeah. The, the art of rap uh, concerts that we're doing every year now. We did a big one last summer. Sold out two big concerts. We had Game headlining one. I Dope. headlined the other one. We had everybody from Bambada. Name the people that was at the heart of yeah, Africa Bambada, Slick Rick, Dougie Fresh, Curtis Blow, Mac 10, King T, Razkaz, Cold yeah. Crush Brothers, yeah, 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 yeah. Melly Mel. Yeah. Oh, it was named. And, yeah. and it, it sold was out. And it, yeah. it, 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 was, it was not just. Oh, Mob Deep. Can't leave out them niggas. They was. Mean yeah, Mob Deep yeah. came out there, EPMD, Smash, mm-hmm. you know, and it was something that they told us we couldn't do. They said, you can't sell out concerts without groups that are on the radio. I'm like, watch this. Yeah. There's a there's an adult hip-hop audience out there that would love to see your ass in concert. Oh, yeah. You know? So we're going to get to it, but, man, it's been an honor, bro. Yo, you know, Ice, man, always a pleasure. And tell tell your fans out there how they can reach you on for whatever. Oh, um, you know, I'm I'm not I'm not the best social media guy, but I'm on it. You know what I'm saying? But whatever. <laughs> you can reach give, me. Give on, out your uh, phone number then. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, yeah I, let me tell you. Let me tell you, man. I got this shit that I be fucking with. It's all, it's actually Ryan Leslie's uh, tech company called Superphone. And shit, you know about it? Look, you would know about it and shit. Yeah, it's actually a cool, a cool thing. Actually, Ryan, he's actually really respected in the tech world right now. Right, you know, he's a smart, smart dude. But um, you can reach me on Twitter, Rule York. You can reach me on Instagram, Rule York City. Rule York. So R U L E Y O R K. Yeah, Rule York. And then they got it. Got an ill picture of him flexing up on there, looking real. You know. <laughs> shit. But yeah, cool thing about Twitter is you can follow niggas. Niggas like he probably didn't even know I'm following. Yeah. You, you can like watch your niggas move. Yeah. Who's saying cool shit and who's on their own dick? Niggas be yeah. really on their own dick. Yeah, like, niggas do a lot. Posting yeah, pictures yeah. of them standing in the bathtub. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like yo, son, this, there's guys looking yeah, at this right shit. Too. Yeah. Take it hey, easy. Yo, you know, this is podcast number 48. It's Mick and Ice-T, right? Yeah. But I had to sit back and let you kick it with the iceberg. Yeah, it's all good, Mick. You know, you know we kick it all the time, yeah, we baby. we kick it all yeah, the time, man. All the time. That, was, that was special right there. Yeah. Man. Because I'm a fan, and the thing of it is... Mm-hmm. I'm a fan you, too, when you, Ice, when man. You, when you talk to people that you know too well, you leave out a lot of the mm-hmm. things that people want to know. I yeah. wanted to know these questions. Uh, you know, I seen... I, I was in the game when you started, and I seen the skyrocket. Like, I've been... In the game, I remember going to a concert and watching Craig Mack, uh, Biggie open up for Craig Mack. Yeah. You know? So to see these different arcs of people's careers yeah. and stuff, you know, they're like, who is this nigga Biggie Smalls? You know, Craig Mack had flavor in your ear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one of the beauties of being in hip-hop as long as me, I'm like, I remember when Tupac was in Digital Underground. I mm-hmm. mean, I, I see this. Yeah. So I saw your 
Yeah. The whole arc. Yeah. And I'm like, who is this nigga? Oh, this nigga's making hit records. Oh, Shanti. Oh, they going in. They singing. Oh, it's yeah. real fly. Bitches love this nigga. That's cool. I'm going to meet him one day. Yeah. And, and fortunately, when I met you, you was as cool as I hoped you'd be. Yeah. And that's just hip-hop love. That's so, it, baby. And hip-hop is 42 years old, so it's older than you, too, baby. Oh, shit. There you go. I, I, it should be, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it should be, man. So so any more seasons of the TV show or just... Yeah, we, you know, we're going we gonna to do some more seasons of the show. You know, um, the family have fun doing it, so we're going we gonna to do it some more. I pull out. After a while, this is what, what I did. I did it until you run out of shit to do. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> and, and, and eventually your family will loop. Like, you do the same thing over. Like, I come home, I sit down, I play my video game. I'm doing my same shit. And then the producer's like, you did that. <laughs> we, we have to entertain them. Yeah. I'm like, well, nigga, this is my life. Yeah. Like, I ain't got nothing entertaining happening for another two weeks. They like, okay. What if you got in a shark tank? I'm like, look, check this out. We done. Yeah, yeah. We done. Yo, let me tell you something. No, <laughs> I, I, let me tell you the funny shit, though, right? So I'm thinking of revamping my show and doing my show actually like a family sitcom oh, so with my it, family. Making it funny. Making it more scripted and more funny. With my family, yes. Like, you know what? We're going to do like what Curb Your Enthusiasm does or, or, or The Real Husbands of Hollywood, and we're going to fucking make it a scripted fucking show. Do and, it. And, and, and just do and, it. And, do and, it. Just do, do it. it. And, and have fun with my family, and that way you we can do whatever the fuck we want, and you know that when I'm flying over the fucking yeah. Istanbul with my family, we right. flying over there because that's what the fuck is in the script. You know what I'm saying? And right. you'll get the natural reactions of that. You know, so, I, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about playing with it that way and, and just keeping it 100 and having a whole bunch of fun with it because the adventures that I got coming up and the things that I got coming up, I'm like, yo, I don't want to just, you know, be pigeonholed into being – in the house family show. Right. You know, let's let's take it outside well, I, and have I, some fun with it. I'll just tell you what Chuck D told me. He said, Ice, you done been through the grind. You struggled. You made it out of your twenties. You alive. And he said, yeah. You you done what you could in hip hop. You did you blessed the game. He said, Right now, if it ain't fun, you shouldn't be doing it. That's real shit. And we You don't I, need to do it. We don't need to do it. So I shouldn't be doing it. You shouldn't it. be doing it. You hey, know what I'm saying? We out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Podcast. Hey, yo, Ice, you got to come do my show too. Okay. I okay. got to say, uh, 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 put him uh, on the spot. Put him yeah, on the spot. Pa- parental advisory radio, man. You oh, see, I shit. didn't know. There's a t- uh, <laughs> interview me, nigga. I say some wild. Yeah, I was, yeah. You can get wild and crazy and have a good fucking time, man. All right, that's a deal. Yeah. I owe you. I owe you. We out of here like we stole something. Mick Benzo. Yo. Podcast number 48, Ja Rule, Ice T, Mick Benzo. See ya. Holla. That's how, that's, how, that's, how, that's, how, that's how I'm living. That's 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 how I'm living. That's 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 how I'm living. 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 That's 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 how I'm living. That's 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 how I'm living.